It was a grisly crime. Police found only the bones, blood, and teeth of 25 year old Teresa Hallback, who went to work on Halloween and never came home. Her charred remains were found smoldering in this auto salvage yard. Even more stunning in this case is the suspect. I don't want people out there to know that I didn't do it. I'm innocent. For Stephen Avery, that is a familiar claim. It's hard enough, you know, going to prison for something you didn't do, then you got to do it all over again. Just two years ago, Avery was released from prison after spending more than 18 years behind bars for a violent rape. DNA evidence later proved without a doubt that he was innocent. He did become the poster boy for wrongful convictions. And what can we do better in our justice system to make sure there are no future wrongful convictions? So much so that the Wisconsin State Legislature passed the so-called Avery Bill, which changed arrest procedures and the use of DNA. For his wrongful arrest 20 years ago, Stephen Avery is suing the county for $36 million. Mike Halbach, once sympathetic to Avery's cause, is no more. He's no victim in this case. My sister is a victim, and I want people to know that. Teresa Hallback worked for the Auto Trader newspaper. She was last seen taking pictures at the Avery salvage yard. That is where police found her car with Stephen Avery's blood inside. Investigators also found Avery's DNA on the ignition key hidden in his trailer nearby. All the evidence is leading to him. I don't want people to forget my sister, and I don't want her to get lost in all this. Ironically, the laws Stephen Avery helped put into place required police to tape his interrogation. In this case, that is evidence that could help convict him. For Good Morning America, Barbara Pinto, ABC News, Chicago. The salvage sign is a bitter reminder of a difficult time in these parts. Today, blue ribbons hang from the sign for Teresa Halbach, so she's not forgotten in the media frenzy of making a murderer. That was all my daughter. She shared the image on Facebook. We all got a heart. And people out there, they just don't think we do. Earl Avery and his brother Chuck still run the salvage yard, and despite the family's sympathetic portrayal in the documentary, he says his family continues to take the heat. They call us murderers, they call us everything else in the book. People pointing fingers at you and nah, saying maybe it was just, you and Chuck. Yeah, and it was just a bunch of bullshit. People are going to say what they want to say. They don't even know us. A decade ago, Stephen Avery made headlines when he was freed from prison for a rape he didn't commit. He was in the process of suing Manitowoc County for wrongful conviction when Teresa Halbach went missing. Day one. Photographer Teresa Halbach has three freelance shoots to photograph cars for Auto Trader magazine. She's never seen again. Day four. Halbach's mother calls police. Co-workers say she hasn't been to work in three days. Day five. Hello, this is Teresa with Auto Trader Magazine. Investigators learn one of Halbach's last assignments was at the Avery Salvage Yard. Manitowoc's sheriff asked Calumet County to lead the investigation because of Avery's lawsuit. Couldn't believe it. I know somebody missing. That's not good. Day six. We found a brand four. Investigators ship it to the state crime lab for testing. Day seven. The crime lab finds human blood inside Hallbach's SUV. In Stephen Avery's trailer, investigators seize guns, handcuffs, leg irons. Day 8. On the seventh search of Avery's trailer, a Manitowoc investigator involved in Avery's lawsuit finds a car key in Avery's bedroom. They're scheduling me out again. Deep down, it hurts. Day 9. In a fire pit next to Avery's trailer, fire marshals find bone fragments and human teeth. Day 10. 12 News is on the phone with Stephen Avery as officers arrest him for gun possession. He's a convicted felon and can't have the two guns found in his trailer. While the documentary suggests the sheriff's department only targets Avery, investigators look at the entire Avery family. 12 News is there as they round up seven of Avery's relatives to get DNA samples, including Avery's brothers Chuck and Earl. Both have sex-related convictions. Finally, the crime lab confirms the teeth and bones found in Avery's fire pit are human. A shaken sheriff tells the Halbach family. Uh, that was very hard for me, and I'm sure 20 times harder for them. Day 11. 
Crime Lab reports four separate samples of Avery's DNA in Halbach's car and Avery's DNA on that key found in his bedroom. A key they now know starts Teresa Halbach's SUV. Day 12. It is no longer a question who is responsible for the death of Teresa Halbach. The district attorney announces he will charge Stephen Avery with murdering Halbach and mutilating her corpse. Day 13. I didn't do nothing. Avery goes on the defensive. They planted evidence. I was going to be there. I won't harm her. She seemed like a nice girl. She did her job, and that was it. Avery is now serving a life sentence for murder. A decade later, his brother Earl believes Stephen was framed. I think he deserves another trial completely. Oh, yeah, he was railroaded. His brother Chuck. Goodbye. Well, we'll leave if you'd like us to. I gotta go. Well, that 16 year old nephew of Stephen Avery is held here in the Sheboygan County Jail tonight ahead of that court appearance tomorrow morning. He's accused of the rape and murder of Teresa Halbach and accused of taking part in the crimes just as much as Stephen Avery himself. Shortly after the disappearance of Teresa Halbach on Halloween last year, her remains were found on the Avery Salvage Yard property near Manitowoc. A few days later, Stephen Avery was arrested, but investigators stayed on the case, believing there was more to the story. This week, they say, they discovered it. If you knew Ms. Halbach before she was killed, it's our suggestion, both the sheriff and myself, that you not listen to this press conference. In detailing the charges against Avery's nephew, 16-year-old Brendan Dassey, Calumet County DA Ken Kratz could barely contain his disgust as he tells about how the boy discovered his uncle raping Teresa Halbach in his trailer. Teresa Halbach is begging Brendan for her life. The evidence that we've uncovered establishes that Stephen Avery at this point invites his 16-year-old nephew to sexually assault this woman and he's had bound to the bed. But instead of running for help, prosecutors say Brendan joined in. After the sexual assault is completed, Stephen Avery tells Brendan what a good job he did. Takes Brendan into the other room and now describes for Brendan his intent to murder Teresa Halbach. Prosecutors say the two killed her together, stabbing and strangling her, then burning the body in a failed effort to conceal the crimes. I hope as we sit here today and as this case proceeds, those individuals that knew Teresa will remember this extraordinary young woman and the joy that she brought to all of those around her. Well, investigators say that new evidence came to light this week when they re-interviewed Dassey. They say that they talked to him when Halbach disappeared, and his answers then and now just Prosecutors didn't Prosecutors kept up. asking Dassey why would he confess to the murder of Teresa Halbach if he didn't kill her. Dassey didn't say much. Now it's up to a jury to decide which story they believe. 12 News' Nick Bohr is in Manitowoc tonight, and Nick Brendan Dassey didn't really have an answer for why he would lie. Not much of one, Terry. Jurors, of course, spent uh, Friday watching a videotape from uh, March of 2006 in which Brendan Dassey uh, gave details and confessed to the crimes. Uh, today, they saw him take the stand and try to say that none of it was true. And we put it on the floor and then he shot her ten times. And he threw it in a fire. Just one of the dozens of admissions by Brendan Dassey in March of 2006 that he sexually assaulted and joined his uncle, Stephen Avery, in murdering Teresa Halbach. I never seen her there. But today, Dassey's story is much different as he decides to testify in his own defense. Now he says he never even saw Halbach that day, much less hear her begging for help. How do you know what she said? I made it up. You made it up? Yeah. Dassey continuously answered. I don't know. When asked why he confessed to the crimes and about details of the murder, only occasionally offering an explanation for what he now says was lying to police. You told him there was no fire that week, right? Yes. So you lied to him? Yes. Why did you lie to him? Because I'm just like my family. I don't like cops. Dassey admitted it wasn't just police, that he'd also told his mother he saw Halbach at Avery's trailer that day. You lied to your mother as well? Yes. And you lied to the police? 
Yes. Are you lying? You're lying today? No. Now, later today, a fingerprint analyst uh, was called by the defense to say that none of the uh, items that he tested at the state crime lab came back positive for Brendan Dassey's fingerprints. Live at the Manitowoc County Courthouse, Nick Ford, WISN 12 News. Okay, Nick. So did Dassey say how he could make up the details of the crime? Well, at first he didn't. Uh, later on, though, when he was pressed on it, he said that really uh, uh, that it all came down to uh, some books that he'd read and also news accounts that he'd heard. And that's how he says he came up with all these details, which, by the way, a lot of them.